consider your ways. Consider your ways. I mean, think about the way you've been doing things. Think about where God is being in your life. Think about the way you treated God. Did you hear me? Consider how you have been treating God. You say, God has been good to me, but I want to ask you, have you been good to God? God is great. Have you been great to God? God is loving. Have you been loving God? God is caring. Have you been caring for God? Consider your ways. Tell your neighbor one more time. Consider your ways. Let's go. Verse 6 tells us this. Verse 6. You have so much and bring in little. You eat. This is the current uh, uh, situation of the people of God who are not considering the ways of God. Okay? They're not being considering. So this is what happens to them. You have so much and bring in little. You eat but do not have enough. You drink but you, you are not filled with drink. You clothe yourselves but no one is warm. And he who earns wages earns wages to put into a bag of holes. How many of you have felt like this? How many of you felt like this? You work so much, it's still not enough. You get extra, it's still not enough. At the end of the day, you get all the money you can and you put it in your pocket and you put it in a bag of holes. How much you put it, it falls away. You know why? Not that because, not, not, it's, it's not so much because uh, you know, uh, you're not doing this or not doing that right. It's simply because you have not considered your way. You have not considered God in your life. You can call yourself a Christian, but in your finances, have you considered God? Have you considered God in your money? That's why you'll never have enough. That's why it's so amazing. You can do a lot more with 90% that you have remaining than with 100% that you have. It's amazing. I can tell you that. You can do more with 90% after giving you 10%. You can do it more than 90%. And God knows how to stretch in 90% to 900%. Amen. He knows how to do that. He can, in your mind, it doesn't make sense, but God knows. Uh, or do you feel like you have, you work so hard. You eat, but you have no enough. You're working so much. Still not satisfied. Still not enough. You got to, because you know why? You've been living for yourselves. Who is the center at this point in time? As you consider your, your ways, you got to ask yourself, who is the center of my life? Are you the center of your life? Who is sitting in the throne of your hearts this afternoon? If you are sitting on the throne of your heart, dethrone yourself. If something else is sitting at the throne of your heart, dethrone it and put Jesus at the throne of your heart. Make Jesus the focal point. Don't go year after year after year the same thing. Oh, I have the same problem. No, it's time that you change, you consider your ways and make some changes in your life and say, God, I'm going to start considering your ways. I'm going to consider your works, oh God. I'm going to consider your house. He who earns wages, earns wages to put into a bag of holes. Because the complete blessing of God, God has given you a job. God has given you the ability to earn. But the thing is, you are not able to enjoy the full potential of it. Because the blessing of God is not completely upon you. Because you have not considered the house of God. It is about you. It's not about God. Can I just talk to you straight this afternoon? Amen. I don't want to just to go a bit around the bush and try to say no because I want to talk straight and let the truth be told. And I want to see you prosper. I want to see you do all that God has called you to do. Consider the house of God today. Consider the work of God today. Verse 7, 7 tells us, that says the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. Go up to the mountain and bring wood and build a temple that I may take pleasure in it and be glorified, says the Lord. Verse 9, you looked for much, but indeed it, cut, it came to little. But when you brought it home, I blew it away. Why? What he's saying is this. 
You try to earn. You try to, you try to take care of your own self. And God is saying, I, I'm not going to bless it. See, gaining is nothing wrong. To have more money. I was telling this morning our Filipino church, I told them this. You want to get rich, get as rich as possible this year. As long as God is glorified and the motivation is to glorify God. Amen. No, damn you. As far as that's your plumb line, get as rich as possible. You want to be successful? Be as successful as possible. Climb the ladder as high as you can. As long as Jesus is the bedrock of your faith. He is the focal point. He is the center of everything that you do. Keep that in mind and climb as high as you can. No problem. And that's what he's saying. You look for much, but it needed came a little. But when you brought it home, I blew it away. So God, God is saying, I want to bless you with my blessings. I want to bless you a lot more than what you can bless yourself with. God wants to bless you. Let me tell you in 2014, he wants to give you a God-sized blessing. God-sized blessing. How many of you have been to Pizza Hut? How many of you like the pizzas, the large pizzas? But I personally like to go to those other new places that they've opened up where they got a 22-inch pizzas. Big ones. A big pizzas, right? I love it because you know what? It blows your mind away. See, why are you looking for a little pizza for 2040? God says, I want to blow your mind away. I want to give you God-sized blessings. Amen. Have you ever tried Car The other day, I, the, our youth were going for caroling. I went and got a few boxes of that. Even for them, that was like a little snack for them. I mean, it all went off like in two minutes, I think. You know, and this box is huge. It's like moving somebody's house. And you carry this thing. I mean, it's huge. The man God was so focused, God, if I can have this, if I can have that, I'm so blessed. No, God is saying, you can have that, but I can bless you a lot more than that if you consider your ways. I can give you a God, I can give you a God-sized blessing. One of the things McDonald's they ask you is, when you, do you want to, what do you call it? Upside. What do you call that? Upside. What's it, Bob knows it. What is it, Bob? Super size. That's right. You want to super size it. That's right. You want to super size it. Ah, you say, okay, how much? Right? You know, there's a cost and all. But let me tell you, God is asking if you would allow me to be the center of your life, I will super duper size it for you. I will God size it for you. And consider God. Consider him. Because of my house that is in ruins while every one of you runs to his own house. That means, you say, you are living a very self-centered life. It's all about my house. It's all about me. It's all about what I want. It's nothing about what God wants and what he wants to get done in his house. Consider our ways. Consider our ways. Can we reach out? It's about my safety. Like I told you, don't ever pray for your job to be secure. Pray for everybody in your company to have a job security. Because I told you this before. If you have 10 people in your department and say, God, save my job. Right, nine other people get fired. You're the only one left in your department. And you come back and say, praise the Lord, pastor. Uh, I, God saved my job and nine of them got fired. And next Sunday you come back again. Pastor, please pray for me. All the nine people's job came to me. So I'm working doing 10 people's job. Pray because I'm ready to quit and I'm going to get ready to get burned out. One week you had a victory, next week you're ready to get burned out. You just don't pray for the safety of your children alone. You pray for the safety of all the children who go in the school bus. Pray for the safety of all the children who go to school. Amen. Let me tell you, that's the heart of God. Amen. Don't just consider only your, only my house, my this, my that. Let's get out of our selfishness and start beginning to consider the house of God. Amen. It's good for you to dwell. God is not saying, I'm against it. He's against the attitude. He's against the motive. He's against the positioning of their hearts. Let's go to verse uh, 10. Therefore the heavens above you withhold the dew. The earth withholds its fruit. For I call for a drought on the land and the mountains, on the grain and the new wine and the oil, on whatever the ground brings forth, on man and livestock and all the labor of your hands. So you might have a degree of success in life. But I believe God wants to bring God's size blessing over your life. Amen. He wants to. 
He wants to bring that. And God wants us to reach our full potential. He wants us to be all that we can be in 2014. We don't want God to withhold anything from us in 2014. Does anybody want God to withhold anything from you in 2014? No, I don't want. I want heaven's invasion over my life, over my family in 2014. I want heaven to come and release everything that God has. Consider our ways. Consider your ways. Maybe you are experiencing a drought in life. Maybe you need to consider your ways. Maybe you're not experiencing a blessing of God like the way you should be experiencing. Consider your ways. Maybe today we don't have a building project to come and build a house. But there are so many areas that we can get involved in the house of God. So many ways we can get involved. You know, let me just start with this, simply, this service right here. Some of you, you know, many of you are working. We are not able to come for any other church uh, uh, you know, activities during the week. If Sunday is the only day you could come, come to church on time. Come to church before time. Get involved in one thirty. It's one once a week. One few hours. That's all you're giving. That's all you're giving. Give your best shot. If all that you can do is Sunday, come early, get involved, get involved in setting up, encourage the people, get involved in prayer, worship God, do all that you can, invite some people, all you've got is you can do Sunday, give your best shot. All that you got, give your best. Don't come for just a few minutes and just do a token and go out, because consider your ways in 2014. Let's honor the Lord with that. Hallelujah. Well, Pastor, I, I need to go to have my coffee. Shift your clock a little bit more earlier. Go to the coffee place. Buy your cup of coffee. Buy your snack or whatever you want to get. At the same time, invite 10 people from the coffee shop. Say, I, I'm going to church. Why don't you join me in the church and bring 10 people to church? Amen. Let them come to know the Lord. Hallelujah. Bring people to the Lord. Make some changes. Shake it up a bit this year. Amen. You know, one of the things with my family is my wife. She loves to shake things around in my house. I mean, she likes change. One day I'll go, the bed will be this way. Next day I'm, I'll go, the bed will be that way, you know. She loves it. You know, she doesn't want, doesn't want the same thing like that. You know, she wants to change. You will, and it's like everything, where was, you know, where was that? You know, and then she, she would tell me, well, I'm thinking about changing things around. Uh, what do you think about it? So tomorrow when you come back, you know, let's try to move. By the time I come back next, next day, from wherever, at work or whatever, everything's already done. She's going to wait for the change. Sometimes we got to shake things up a little bit. Shake things up a bit. Consider our ways. Consider our ways. Hallelujah. Let's consider our ways. We don't want God to blow away. We want God to blow a blessing on us. He says, listen, that God, he blew away what they brought home. But I don't want God to blow away. I want God to blow in a blessing from heaven. I want God to blow his breath of life into my life, into my family. Hallelujah. That, that I can enjoy the blessing of God. Get involved on a Sunday. Come in. If you can do a little bit more, if you can come in for the prayer meetings on Tuesday night. We just pray from 7.30 to about 8, 8.45. We are done. Well, Pastor, I can't make it every week. I'm not asking you every week. Once a month. Can you come for a prayer meeting? Once a month. Once a month. That's all. Can you start with once a month? Because you know why? It gets contagious. One will make it two. All I'm asking is once. You know, this year, come to prayer meeting only 12 times on Tuesdays. 12 times. Ah, that's so easy. Isn't it? So easy. It's so easy, but when it really comes down to it, let me tell you, on a Tuesday, you're going to get so busy. That's when you start making your decisions. So tired. Monday, you won't get tired. Wednesday, you won't get tired. Thursday, you won't get tired. But Tuesday, you'll get tired. Why? Because that's the prayer meeting day. Ask Brother Sully. Talk to Brother Sully. He, all other days, no, no meetings. On Tuesday alone, he'll have an emergency meeting at 6 o'clock. Right? And, and they want to talk and talk and talk. And he'll say, no. What time do you tell them you have to leave? By 6.40? By 6.40, I have to leave. You tell them, well, whatever it is, I have to leave at 6.40. And they honor that. They respect that. At least once a month, can we all consider our ways? You want to do a little bit more. Get involved in the I Connect groups. But Pastor, there's nothing near my house. Start one near you. My house is too small. Do you have a McDonald's near your house? Yes? Start it already. We can start right there. But it's only me and somebody. Yes, two are there? Start. We are very easy. We don't need to have a board to approve all these things. 
We don't need to go through the agenda of you know some board of directors to approve this thing. No, no. Two people are there. You're ready to do something. You reach out. Let's do it. Don't have to wait. Get involved. Get involved. Men, I want to get, the women, men will get involved. The women get involved in women's meetings and different things, of different areas of ministry. In the small thing, if you really bring it to bite size, let me tell you, all these things are attainable. We think about, oh, I need to commit myself. All, when, you, when you start doing it, when it becomes a lifestyle, then when it becomes easy, then you don't want to go just once a week. You want to go to every other, all, you know, next week. And after that, you know what? I feel like doing one more week. See, take it at bite size. Can I tell you something? Consider your ways. Consider your ways. How much do you spend time for your own personal comfort? How much do you spend time in watching telev television? How much do we give time for leisure? Can we give a little bit more for God in 2014? How much money do we spend on holidays? We spend tens of thousands of dollars for holidays. Let me tell you, is it last year we went to Israel? Is it last 2013? I mean, families were spending anywhere from $40,000 to $100,000 just, I know, of course, it's great to go to Israel, but I'm just saying, we can spend money. Come on. Don't tell me, don't be very quiet on me today. That means we can spend money. It's a great thing. God bless you that you went to Israel for all those who did. That means we can spend money for something that will satisfy us. That means we can do something if we really want to do something. Would you consider God's house today? Would you consider God's house? If nothing at all on Sunday, would you give your best? I don't know because of work and schedules and all that. But start Sunday. Give them your best Tuesday. There's also I Connect Group on Fridays. If nothing at all, you know, you want to do a little bit more, come and talk to Pastor Raymond. Pastor Raymond, how, how can I come and help with the young people? You know, I, I, I cannot preach to the young people. I cannot do this. But maybe you're good in math. Maybe you can teach some of our young people who are struggling in math or science or whatever subjects they got these days. You can come and teach them. There's so many ways to come and consider the house of God. Can I go and reach out to somebody? Maybe you, well, Pastor, I got some free time this week. Maybe I, I can give you some work. Can you, can, can you go and visit with Romy? By the way, Romy's in the hospital again. She's back in the hospital. She's in the worst pain she's ever been in the past weeks. Maybe you want to just be there, just to be with her, just to pray with her, just to encourage her. You can do that. Consider beyond yourself. Consider the house of God. That Jesus be first in our lives and everything that we do. In a few moments, I really I want you, I want us to just to keep this place and if we can minimize this moment, less more uh, any movements here unless it's so necessary. In a few moments, the children are going to join us, and as a, as a church, we're going to stand before God and dedicate our lives as we consider our ways. And as the children would come, they will come in a few few in a few moments or so. But I want us to once again consider our ways. Consider our ways and our giving. You know, Pastor Neil talked about tithe, and, and this church has been talked about tithe so much. In, let's, let's look at uh, Proverbs chapter 3. You're familiar with this scripture? Honor the Lord with your possessions and with the first fruits of all your increase. So your bonds will be filled with plenty, and your vats will overflow with new wine. This is talking about honoring God in our tithes and our offerings and all the increase. First fruits giving. Can I give you one more thought today? I want to give you one more layer on that. First giving. Maybe you haven't heard of this. First giving. We learn about tithes. Have you learned about tithes? You did wonderful this time when Pastor Neil did that. You know, he gave some great answers and or spot on answers. You were, you know, we know about tithes. That's first fruits giving. That means giving of our tithes. But I want to take it. I want to do, how, uh, how want, we, and we got it right, we want to give our tithes, we also want to be cheerful, but I want to take a little bit more, I want to fine tune it a bit more, it's first giving. What does first giving mean? This is what it means. Assume that you got your salary on the first of the month. When do you pay your tithes? Today's the first Sunday, okay? How you look at your money and how you decide determines how you want God to bless you. 
Sometimes people will get their salary on the 1st of December, excuse me, 1st of January, let's assume, and pay their tithes on the 20th of January. And question, did you pay your tithe in January? Yes. My question is this, how was my attitude towards paying it? And the, the first giving means this. When you get your income, the first thing, the first thought, the first action, what is it that you do? It's got to be your tithe. That's what first giving means. And let me tell you this. I have done this for the past several months. God has blessed us. A special blessing comes upon this. I waited until today to tell you this. Until, because it's one area we can prove God in finances. Every month. God blessed us somehow, some way, extra. You get your money, the first thing, yes, you're not in church today, you're not, you're not saying, for instance, like this month, first was on Wednesday, you're not in church until, when, uh, on, until Sunday, until the 5th. How, how about that? But I'm saying, for the first thing come, what's the first thing you take your money to release? Do you pay your, 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 your electricity bill first, or you pay God first? Get your money aside. If you write a check, write a check, keep it aside. Your first Fruits, amen. Your first fruit. The children are coming and bring them in. Bring them in. They can come and sit right here in the front. Let them all just come. Let them just come. That's what first fruit giving means. First fruit giving is we're giving what belongs to God, but we are also giving to God first. Are you able to follow me right now? We're giving to God what rightfully belongs to Him. Now, instead of saying, oh, I forgot about it. You, you, how many of you can forget your, your rental? How many of you forget your rentals? What happens? I know in my house, if you forget our rental, my landlord will knock the door. How many of you can forget your mortgage? Your bank will knock the door. You don't want to get into trouble with those things. You don't want to get, get into trouble with... Uh... Okay, come on, kids. All right, just want to sit down. That's all. Sit down. Sit down. <laughs> we want to honor God. Just give me an honor. These kids are cute, but look at me for a little while. All right. We honor God with what we have. Now, when we have that kind of attitude, the first thing that you release is what you set your heart on. The first thing that you release from your thigh, from your, from your income, is your rental. That's where your heart is. The first thing that you release are the utilities. That's where your heart is. The first thing that you release is all your payments. That's where your heart is. But the first thing that you release is to God. That's where your heart is. Amen. Set your heart on it. If you got to think, maybe you're not able to come to church or something. Set it apart. It's not so much about the day. It's about the position of your heart. The first giving. Say this with me. First giving. First giving. See, when you do that, let me, let me tell you this. Next three months. Next three months. I want you to do this and see a blessing come upon your life. Amen. God, has, I've seen that in our lives the past few months, especially. Uh, we've always done it, but purposefully, mindfully, I did that even more. First thing, first thing, write your check down. First thing, keep it. That's where, that, that means that's where the priority, my money that God has, has given us, my priority is in for God. First giving to God. Hallelujah. See, I believe with all my heart that if we make God, Jesus the center of our lives, everything else revolves. Esther, can we just go to a slide? What we need to do is this. A uh, little bit more, please. Yeah. Let's go back. There's a picture with Jesus in the center of it. A white color slide. You got to cancel yourself. Put Jesus there. Detone yourself. Not your agenda. Not my agenda. God's agenda. God's agenda. My wife is just going to come right now in a few moments. And I, I want her to a, encourage you with a few of the things that God has put upon her heart. But I want to bring a reality at the same time. As we put, this is the year to serve God, to do everything that God has called us to. I'm, I'm not making anything too light or doom and gloom or anything. Remember last week, entitled Sermon, Have I Told You Lately? Have you told somebody that you love them? 
Have you told, have you, did you appreciate somebody that you needed to appreciate whether at home or work or your boss or employee or whatever, you know, that you feel you haven't told them or, on Monday morning I got a call from Elizabeth Lynn. She calls me, she said she was crying and crying. She said, Pastor, I just want to let you know that my brother just died this morning. He just died this morning. So last Monday morning, his brother died, her, her brother died. You know, did we miss an opportunity to tell somebody that we love, that we care about? This is the year to serve. This is the year to show our children, amen. If they don't see from us, where else are they going to learn? They're going to learn from Nickelodeon. Do you want the Nickelodeons to teach them? Do you want Disney Channel to follow them? Come on, I know it sounds funny. And if, if, if I were to ask uh, my son right there, I'd say, who's your father? he will say, you dad. Right? <laughs> but because we are so busy, let me tell you this. Nickelodeon and Disney Channel. And what other things you guys watch? Cartoon Network. I know you don't watch it. Oh, what? Well, <laughs> Cartoon Network. Do you want Cartoon Network to mother them? Do you want Nickelodeon to father them? That's what happened. That's the generation that we are in right now. Where the TV is parenting them. Teaching them, this is good, that is good, this is the way it should be. And that's why when we tell them it's so difficult for us to get a message across to our children. <laughs> Elizabeth Lynn calls us and she tells me her brother died. A few hours later, on Monday, I was in the office and I was going to meet Pastor Trevor who works in the Sheraton Hotel. I was near the mosque, not in the mosque, but I was near the mosque. <laughs> and I, was, I don't have a problem going to the mosque, especially you know, if I'm talking with people about Jesus. I got no, no, no problem at all. And I was just going from there. I told, uh, told Trevor, I'm going to see you in a few minutes. And uh, he had to pass some stuff over to me. And I was just going. In a matter of five minutes, I go to him. He looks at me and he tells me, Samantha, his wife, his father just died. Samantha's father, Pastor Samantha, Trevor, she was just talking to her dad. She was just talking to her dad over the phone. And the father and mom, they were walking in the hockey field and just watching people, kids playing hockey and uh, just, uh, uh, this is Bombay. And they were just on the, she was talking to him on the phone. And after that, she just, he just told, go, go ahead and talk to your mom. And he was, she was talking to her mom. While she was talking to her mom, the father fell down on the floor and died just like that. No sickness, just like that. So you don't know what life brings about. On the 26th of December, my wife was talking with Shanta, Pastor Sina's Pastor wife in Malaysia. She called to wish my wife's uh, wife happy birthday early that morning. And my wife was asking how uh, how father was doing and everything. And, and uh, she was on the way to see her. She was on the way to see her father. One hour later, we get a call again from her saying that, Valerie, while I was talking with you, my father died. And then we have Elizabeth's brother who passed away last, last, Sunday, uh, last Monday morning. In the afternoon, Pastor Samantha's father, just like that, we've gone. Um, you know, we really dearly love Uncle. He's a wonderful guy. I mean, one of the best dancers, especially. He was 73 years old. He and his wife, great dancer, but we just love him. I think Alan, Alan couldn't believe it. He called me. He's, you know, he had to call me to confirm it. You just saw him a few weeks ago in Hong Kong. A few weeks, a few days later, our dear friend, who now, the, the number of years ago they were part of this church, now they are attending our Tung Chung Church, Dominic and Hannah. Hannah, you know, she was dying, but she made it through 2013. Gloriously, she died on 1st of January at the age of 43 of cancer. See, life is short. We have a short time. Brother, would you want? We have a short time. There's no telling what we're going to be faced with this year. Have you prepared yourself well for 2014? I think mine is somewhere here. Have you prepared well? Are you sorry? Aha, uh -huh. it's behind this dog. Is this yours? Hello, what's his name? Walla. Okay, thank you, Walla. <laughs> Have you prepared yourself for 2014? Let me ask you this. Have you prepared, have you got enough insurance to cover all your uncertainties? 
the accidents that you might have. Are, are you well covered? What happens to life? Do you have life insurance? Do you have good, good hospital uh, insurance that you have enough to take care of yourself? Have you saved enough money, 2042, to take care of any difficulties that will come? I hope you're well prepared. But you can never be prepared enough for what life throws at you. No money can solve. No money. No money. No insurance. No assurance from man can solve. But let me encourage you. Put Jesus the center of your life. Amen. Okay, I have two words I want you to think about. First thing is journey, and the second thing is engage. That's our team for this year, engage. Okay, journey. You know, we start journeys in our life, like now we are entered 2014, so it's a what? new journey for all, all of us. We have journeys when we uh, get married. It's a new journey, a new phase in our life. When we have children, when the young people start working, it's a journey, a process that we go through. Now, this year we are entering, we entered five days already. We've entered a new journey in our life. Now, when we enter, when, when, we, when we go for a journey, there are different modes of transportation. We can walk, we can fly, we can run, we can bike, we can whatever you can think of. We go through a different journey in our life. Everyone goes through a different way we end our journey. This first four days in our life, for us, like what John said, the first day we heard about uh, Hannah uh, going to the Lord. On the second day, we took Rowie to the hospital. You know, she, uh, uh, she had some problems. The third day was calm, I think so. <laughs> On the fourth day, we had an email that caused a stir in, 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 our, in, in our house. So now, and today is the fifth day, and I'm just thinking, Calvary Church, we are a family. We are a family. All these people was not directly connected. It's not my, my children or my husband. But because Calvary Church is a family, it does affect our, our lives. You see, Calvary Church, if you feel that you're an individual in this in, in Calvary family, then you need to get engaged. You need to participate so that then you will feel Calvary as a family. And I, I drive a lot. So I was just thinking, the journey that we started in 2014, we, you know, if you see something is wrong, stop help. We want you to get and engage in people's life. Rowi is sick, so yeah, she's not my sister or not my immediate relative. So, but we are a family. Today, we we want you to go to the next level. Calvary Church. It doesn't have to be just your Calvary Church. We got Tung Moon, we got Tung Chung, we got One Chai, TST. You know, we have so many churches. We got DB. We are one family. If you are, if you feel like you are an individual, then you need to get engaged into Calvary Church to be connected and feel that you are a family. When one hurt, we all hurt. Like this few weeks as pastors. We heard for every, not just international church, but all our churches, we heard the same way like they heard. So I am encouraging you as we go through this journey, as we start, start 2014, it might have not been a rough, it might have been a rough start, but you know, there are going to be roads that are going to be smooth. There are going to be victories when one Rejoice, we rejoice with them because we are a family. Calvary is a family. And I want to encourage you as we 
uh, taking steps. We, we are speaking this to be engaged. Get involved. Engagement means to participate, to get involved. And to get involved and to, to be committed, I say to, get, to participate, to get involved, it requires commitment from you. It requires commitment. And we are asking today, raise the bar in your life. 2040, start this journey. Be engaged in everything that Calvary Church is doing. You believe in this church, if Calvary is your family, then get engaged. It is. It can be a fearful step, but you know what? Doesn't matter. If this is your family, then start this journey by getting involved.